We can all do that if we are willing to be explicit and structural about the ways in which racism works all around us. Any time in this country that we have decided to restrict immigration, we've driven up the numbers of undocumented immigrants. So either way, whether we're treating immigrants as criminals or treating immigrants only as workers, we dehumanize immigrants. So we cannot wait for things to get worse. People need us to keep moving so that they can get their legal status, find decent jobs, keep their homes, and live out their full potential. Today, where Americans, uh, or that was released recently by Time and CNN, where Americans said, for example, 25% of them don't think that Muslims can be patriotic Americans and believe in American values. Nearly a third of, poll res of respondents to that poll said that um, Muslims should not be allowed to run for president or serve on the Supreme Court. So this question of whether the Cordoba House should be built is, and the controversy around it, really points to a deep anxiety about our national identity uh, well, and no, who we are and who belongs here. I named the book The Accidental American because I wanted to explore the idea that all Americans are accidental in some way. Local police departments should not be enforcing immigration law mainly because it creates fear and distrust uh, between the local police and the immigrant communities and it therefore then makes immigrant communities extremely vulnerable to crime. It drives them underground. It makes uh, them not report crimes. So it actually ends up giving criminals free reign to operate and it divides American communities. What happened in Arizona is that there's been so much talk over the last 20 years about illegal aliens that an entire population of people, of Latinos really, has been dehumanized. Even though people experience racism individually, the origins of racism are actually structural. That is, it's our public policies that create bad schools, unemployment, poor health care, and deadly wars. Somebody definitely benefits from those policies, but it's not the average person struggling to make a better life for herself, her family, and her community. The people who talk the most about race are uh, racist conservatives, and so they get to frame the entire discussion to the degree that liberals are could intervene in that discussion, they don't. And the alternative to a vision of post-racialism where we have this kind of fake feeling that we're past race is actual racial equity. We're in a situation now where structural, the, the things that could really close the racial divide are actually new rules, new structures, new institutions, but Americans won't support those because they can't see the need for them. That seems to me to be the political problem that we have to solve. Under a diversity banner and strategy, what you get is a lot of white organizations reaching out to communities of color to get communities of color to carry out the agenda that the white organizations with all their white leadership have developed. We shouldn't have to fight to keep the National Guard from arresting parents in the Lower Ninth Ward of New Orleans from cleaning out their local school in order to preserve the books and materials their kids would need when the state was finally forced to reopen that school. We shouldn't have to fight to make sure that six teenagers in Gina, Louisiana don't go to prison. We shouldn't have to fight to get access to the best jobs in restaurants, fulfilling college educations, or a proper diagnosis at the hospital.